Hi, I'm Stella. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today is Ben, my top 10 Susie and the Benches songs. Susie and the Benches were a British post punk new wave band formed in 1976 by vocalist Susie C and ba bass guitarist Stephen Severing. On Monday, 20th September 1976, a live music club in London named The 100 Club hosted the festival of bands who would later become legends, Sex Pistols, The Clash, and Susie and the Benches. At the time, Susie and the Benches were utterly inexperienced as musicians. For example, the bassist uh, Stephen Severy had only just started holding the guitar 24 hours prior to the event. But they were totally punk. We were willfully preserved in entire everything. Me and my naivety kind of said, right, I want to be really loud, so I want three microphones, okay? So, <laughs> I, I really don't know if this sound engineer was as naive as I would. He said, all right. <laughs> I wanted something apocalyptic to happen, like making people's guts fall out. They opened the show surrounded by Nazi-style regalia. Susie was sporting a swastika armband and Sid Vicious on drums, wearing a self-designed Bells and Babies t-shirt. They then launched in into a 20-minute improvisation of Lord's Prayer. The audience was stunned with their jaws on the floor. It was brilliant. It was, you know, the energy was there and it, it, it was really, it was perfect for, the, for that moment in time. With hindsight, we can say it's an art performance or something, but we, it was just four people got up, couldn't be bothered to write any songs, couldn't really play anything, and we just made a noise. And then just walked straight back into the crowd and, you know. Well, John Collins was being a little bit snowflake for finding uh, Susie and Ventures to be creepy, but it also kind of understandable because Susie and Ventures were definitely capable of creating a sound with deviance, degenerates, and the sense of minutes evoking the vibes of novelist Edward Allan Poe. <music> Playground Threads is a highlight of the last album of Benchy's original lineup with John McKay's guitar demolishing everything in its way. In 1980, the guitarist of the post punk band magazine, John McGee, joined Suzy and Adventures. Some people call this as a classic Suzy and Adventures lineup as they together produced the album Kaleidoscope, Juju, A Kids in the Dream House. Happy House is a sarcastic song. The projection is everyone smiling, blonde hair, sunshine, eating butter without getting fat, and everything perfect. But it is more common than husband with their wives, their mental families, really. The first time I heard the song Belladonna, I was like, wow, this sounds a bit like the Q song. It just sounds a bit different than the typical Susan Adventures. It's more sweet and more dreamy. And later I found out that. Uh, Robert Smith actually joined Susie and the Benches in 1982 after John McGee left. From like a little little brother to Severin, you know, Severin was kind of dressing him up and showing how to wear shades and letting him borrow his, you know, white jacket and jewellery, you know, his crucifixes and that. Um, it was also a time when he started um, experimenting with my lipstick and... <laughs> he got his trademark um, lipstick from Susie's lipstick. He asked her for it one day when we were at a club and came back from the from the gents wearing it and that was it, it began. <laughs> Not very good. I wish he'd use a mirror to put that lipstick on. <laughs> uh, Robert Smith himself is massively influenced by Susie and the Benches. It's also fairly easy to hear the connection between these two bands. The album Hyena is the only studio album that Robert Smith participated in uh, with Susie and the Benches. It's also interesting that I have two very talented guitarists, uh, John McGee and Robert Smith, bring different dynamics to the band. Oh, 
Susie and Manchester's album Superstition followed a three year hiatus and found the band working with the producer Stephen Haig, who has also worked with Pet Shop Boys and New Order. And the synth pop touches are evident throughout the album. His then for me is like everything else that uh, Susie and Manchester did after the album Pip Show the sickly electronic, uh, a seed house tinged dance beat, and the Polish production. A peep show is fresh, colourful, and more artsy and more eclectic compared to the other Susie and the album. Although I would say uh, the first half of the album is considerably stronger than the later half of the album. The Killing Jar is an up-tempo song that kind of shows the direction that Susie and the Benches were going. Kind of avant pop and a bit of arena rock as well. It's another song from the album Hyena where you can clearly hear Robert Smith's influence as well. Uh, the horns and keyboards kind of remind me of the, the Q song, uh, Push. I wish that uh, Robert Smith had did more stuff uh, with City and the Benches back in the days. But maybe I'm just a Q fan. <laughs> If you have watched my other videos of this channel before, you might have noticed that my intro is from the Hook of Hong Kong Garden. Only one year after their performance at 100 Club in 1976, City Adventures got invited to play two sessions and one of the singer uh, was Hong Kong Garden. It's kind of amazing how much the band has grew had grown within only a year. And after that, uh, City Adventures were described by the media as the Butchen's best unsigned band. Susie and the Manchester's final album, The Rapture, was released in 1995 and produced by John Kell. The self titled song is 11 minutes long with Sublime Cinematic Journey and it sounds wildly different from the 80s stuff. For some reason, the song has a bit of a David Lynch vibe to me, and even the album cover of The Rapture and the poster of Blue Velvet shares some kind of resemblance. Spellbound, the classic scene of benches and the pop anthem for the Gothic King of the 80s. John McGee's guitar spurred the tune forward in tandem with Budgie's galloping drums. It sounds like a dangerous nightmare that is at the same time irresistibly exhilarating. John McGee's guitar has influenced the Smith guitarist Johnny Marr a lot and is pretty discernible here. Susie is a very infectious performer. Her voice carries assertiveness and new wife of dominatrix. But when listening to Juju, I found myself being especially drawn to guitar pop. John McGee likes to break the rule, and his guitar might sound very unexpected and surprising in the best way. Either kind of pristine elegance, wildness without boundary, or just naughty mischief, etc. Rest in peace. He was into sound in an almost abstract way. I love the fact that I could say, I want this to sound like a horse falling off a cliff. And he would know exactly what I meant. He was easily, without a shadow of doubt, the most creative guitarist that Benchies ever had. I find it a bit surprising how the song Voodoo Daily doesn't get mentioned a lot uh, from the album Juju. It sounds like a reckless drive on a highway at night, the widest, most addictive dream. So they meant to remind me how nowadays a lot of bands are so mundane and repetitive. Susan and Manchester might not be everyone's cup of tea, but their music and fashion style, attitude, and the whole persona is never boring. Most importantly, just like their debut performance at 100 Club, they didn't seem like a band that take themselves too seriously. They were just having fun, and that 
brings listeners fun too. The Tan cited the group as one of the most audacious and uncompromising music adventures of the post-punk era. Okay, so that's now my top 10 studio adventures. Uh, if you have any of your personal favorites, uh, welcome to comment down below. And you're also welcome to press the like button down below. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching. See you. Bye-bye.